You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Today, we are joined by members of the Graduate Student Organizing Committee of the UAW Local 2110 in New York, representing graduate workers at New York University. Um, why don't y'all introduce yourselves? Hi, um, I'm Arundhati Velamore. I am a third year PhD student in the Department of Teaching and Learning at NYU. Um, and I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having us. I'm gonna pass it to Sarah. Hi everyone, um, I'm Sarah Squaw. I'm a PhD candidate in history at NYU and a member of GSOC UAW. And likewise, uh, we're really excited to be here and to talk about, um, you know, grad student unionizing and unionizing nationally across the country and how we can all build solidarity. Uh, Lee? Hi, everyone. My name is Leandra Barrett. I go by Lee. Um, and I am a PhD candidate at NYU as well. I'm doing my PhD in American studies and um, I'm thrilled to talk about um, worker solidarity across the country and our successful strike this past May. So thank you all so much for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you all again for coming on. And so, you know, th thanks for mentioning what you're studying. Could you tell us some about what you do as graduate workers like what what are you know what do y'all do for wages uh, you know in addition to your studies so i think there, there are so many different things that there are so many different jobs that graduate workers do at nyu and at so many universities uh, i am an ad, i was an adjunct instructor until last semester um, and so there's a lot of teaching that many of us do either as adjuncts or, or as teaching assistants. Um, there, we have a lot of hourly workers who do different kinds of jobs, including research and also administrative jobs. We have people who, uh, you know, I know someone who runs the teacher residency program in my department. So there is like really quite a wide range of jobs that graduate students do while they are also studying. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sarah, were you going to, or Lee, were you going to add, add something to that? I, I'm just saying, I think Arjun Dati did a really great job summarizing it, but um, we uh, do our own research and conference proposals and we write journal articles and none of that, according to the university, counts as work. Right. Um, but we know that that is work and that we bring value to the university and to our students when we do so. Um, and then, yeah, we are teachers, so we lead classes, we grade papers, we as, you know assign readings, um, we have, you know, people who run programs in our our union. So I ran um, the history of women and gender seminar for a while. Um, and we just have all the sorts of people working. The university would not work without us. It would also not work without um, undergraduate labor and also, you know, contingent labor, because like every other industry, the university is just hell bent on um, undercutting, you know, worker uh permanency and um mm. benefits yeah that's something that i was actually uh i was actually talking to my mother about this this morning about how there are um you know my little sister is in college right now and she was being taught by a graduate employee um and like rebecca my little sister said that she could tell how much like how much stress she was under and how you know, little time she had to actually lesson plan and things like that. And, you know, that is a direct result of the attack on workers in universities, the elimination of tenured positions, of tenure track positions, replacing one tenure track professor with two or three adjuncts or graduate employees instead of having a real good uh, job with job security and, and things like that, and, and replacing them with people that they think it'll be easier to exploit and in, in a lot of times it, it is and it, it's bad obviously you know this is something that the teachers unions over the past 10 years or so when when they're organizing have been has been ramping up has said that their working conditions are their students learning conditions and that goes the same for college as well yeah absolutely, absolutely. 
Sorry. I, absolutely. One of the things that stood out to me, um, both when our when GSOC authorized the strike in late April, um, and then when we all when our in mid April, excuse me, and when we went on strike. Um, our undergraduate students were with us 100% of the way. And in conversation with them, many of them said that for all intents and purposes, in their eyes, the university stopped working. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have been remote over the past year. And the people they've relied on are graduate workers. For the people who, you know, I have a colleague who set up the computer system in their faculty advisor's home as part of their teaching assistant job. Okay. That was on top of lesson planning, leading recitation, and working with students who were under an incredible amount of stress over the past semester. And so when someone like New York University, Columbia University, or Harvard um, dismisses graduate workers, um, acts patronizing towards them, and creates conditions that make it unsafe, difficult, or otherwise obstructs their work, what they're doing is lessening the experience of undergraduate students and people um, throughout the university, whether it's administrative workers, it actually, it hurts all of our working conditions when graduate workers don't have the best working conditions. Right, right. And and so before and before we go into the, the contract negotiations and, and what y'all were able to win, uh, Lee, we were talking yesterday uh, via email, and, and you mentioned that, that your union has been around since 98, but uh, after you ratified your first contract in 2001, uh, it fell through due to an NLRB ruling. So in, in the two or three minutes before our first break, can you talk to us about that and like the effect that the NLRB has had since 2000 on, you know, on graduate workers' ability to organize? Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that. And and Sarah, um, if you have anything to chip into, feel free to just let me know. The NLRB um, and NYU and graduate and GSOC have been among the oldest. Um, it's been among the oldest um, worker employee relations at private universities nationwide. And when GSOC first voted to create a union in 1998 and put together the first contract in 2001. That was under the Clinton appointed NLRB. Excuse me, you might hear some background noise. Um, I live in Manhattan and there's a helicopter. No there's, um, thank you. When the Bush appointed NLRB came into power, one of the first decisions that they made was to make sure that students at private universities could not unionize. That didn't actually stop students from organizing and agitating in the years between 2002 and 2015, but it did severely hamper countries across, uh, excuse me, universities across the country, including Brown University, NYU, and others who in that time period sought to create a union and knew that at the end of the day we were workers, we were receiving hourly wages, um, but that it wasn't until uh, an Obama-appointed NLRB reversed that decision from 2001 that we were able to collectively bargain once again. And so we won our second, quote-unquote, first contract under that new NLRB decision in 2015 that followed um, an, an incredibly long and incredibly strong strike. Um and that was what we built upon when our contract expired in 2020 and what we built upon for this fight um, here. So we've been at the mercy of what the NLRB decides, but GSOC is really lucky that we're now entering this fight with other universities. And so students at Harvard University, Brown University, um, Illinois State, I believe, is unionizing, University of Chicago. And so now we're not alone as the only private university. We're the first private university of graduate workers to organize. Um, but now there's four or five who have their first contract or are negotiating their first contract. That um, is... So I'm excited to see how we can help them in that process. Absolutely. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. 
If you want to see what we're up to throughout the week and get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Valley Labor Report. Uh, we're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for the Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments and release them throughout the week. We upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So, to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, you can go to the Valley Labor Report transistor.fm slash subscribe. We've got a website where you can buy our fantastic union made hats and union made stickers. You can go to the Valley Labor Report org and get those. And finally, if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report.